Hello, I'm Larson the Wolf, and this is Penumbra Overture. Penumbra Overture is a first-person survival horror game that should seem fairly familiar to those remotely in the indie or horror game scenes. The game was released in 2007, and it is the first episode of three in a series. I'll be honest, I went into this game wanting to like it, and hoped to make a good horror review for October. I even wanted to play the entire series and do a review on that. However, I soon realized, once I started Overture, that I wasn't going to be able to do the entire series, as Overture itself is a 7 hour game. The second thing I realized was that the game, though it had some shiny moments, largely failed to be scary. Now, by no means do I think this is the worst game I ever reviewed on this channel thus far, but it's definitely something I hesitated spearheading my horror-focused month. This logically begs the question, why did I let this game start my October reviews? The answer to which is actually who developed it for once. Frictional Games, the creators of the Amnesia franchise in Soma. This was their first game out of their company ever. This puts the Penumbra franchise in an interesting spot in gaming history. It was, and is, the first step Frictional Games made before becoming the horror survival giant it is today. Hell, Penumbra's player mechanics are extremely similar to Amnesia, to the point where it's very clear the steps they took in the future. This is why I'm interested in the game in the first place. I was curious on what games led up to Amnesia for the company. Wow, uh, what a fucking rant. Listen, all I'm trying to say is that, think of this game in terms of eventually turning into Amnesia. Okay, now, excuse me as I rip this game a new asshole. Penumbra Overture starts with some simple still images and an impressive voiceover. The voiceover is written in an interesting and impressive way that is definitely a unique writing style. Uh, it's a little bit Old English and poignant and descriptive, but still just barely comprehensible. It's really hard to describe. This writing style is a pleasant thing in my opinion. It adds to the creepy and mysterious atmosphere of Penumbra. The writing is not just present in the intro voiceover, it is also used in the characters and notes found throughout the game. The synopsis of the game is that you have written a letter to an unnamed person, and it seems that you, the main character, have already died. In this letter, you describe what has happened to you to lead up to this point. You begin by stating you have received a letter from your father, Howard, who you know little of because he left you when you were young. The letter also had a key inside. The key was to a safety deposit box, with the letter having instructions to tell you to burn the contents within the safety deposit box. Your curiosity overwhelms you, and you try to read it, only to find that you can understand very little of what is written. What you do understand, though, is a location found somewhere in Greenland. And of course, as I'm sure you can guess, you end up flying to that place to discover what is there. Whilst wandering the tundra of Greenland, you are caught in a blizzard, and you need to seek shelter. You find an unnamed hatch, you jump into the hatch to get away from the harsh conditions, and lo and behold, you're stuck in a dark place. This setup is fairly cliché, but I thought the game as a flashback was an interesting idea, and the way the game presents itself is once again quite good. It's hard to set up a good original horror story anyway. A good horror start typically needs a couple components. Mystery, suspense, and confusion. Penumbra did this with your father's notes and death and being stuck in a dark weird place. So in my book, it did pretty well. Penumbra actually has a pretty good and creepy atmosphere to it. I was ready to get the shit scared out of me when I started the game up. So let's get the positives out of the way before I tell you how the game was ruined for me. The game's writing was, as I said, good, the atmosphere pretty solid, however the music could use a little bit more variety, but really it's not that big of a deal, it's pretty damn good. The puzzles were very hard and challenging, but never felt like cheap tricks, with the exception of a few physics puzzles. I was also very pleased with the ending of the game, the last 15 minutes or so were some of the best time I had in the game. Though it may seem odd to point out, the intro slash tutorial of the game was kinda cool, it had the player mess around with objects in their closed room. This was probably really nice at the time because the amnesia mechanics can be a pain to get used to and that little start with no enemies around gives you time to adjust to them. Okay, so the first hint that this game wasn't for me was the fact that the hostile creatures were in no way scary. 
Now, I'm a fairly hard person to scare in horror games, but I think that most people will have a hard time by getting scared of these fucking things. They're just dogs. Dogs that can use a stim pack, but just dogs nonetheless. These are the main hostile NPCs as well. Even if you are afraid of them, don't worry, they are easy to avoid, as you have a crouching ability that puts a bluish filter over your screen to signal that you are hidden. And if you stop moving, an even deeper filter comes to signal you are really hidden. This works really well for signaling what's a good cover and what's not, but after some experimenting, I realized being really hidden will make you practically invisible. The game also gives you a plethora of non-confrontational alternatives, like using jerky to distract them or using TNT to knock them out. Ran out of all the consumables? Well, that's okay, you can throw any heavy object to also knock them out. When it gets knocked out, it also gets up and uh, runs away. Uh, yeah, real, real scary guys. And if all that fails, then you can just kill them. Yeah, that's right, if you just hit them enough, you can kill them. They made the main monster in this fucking game mortal. They broke the one simple rule to any horror game. Don't make the monster, or monsters, easy to kill. That's right, they're easy to kill. Not because they're not tough or anything, but they're stuck in an animation loop and you can just simply beat them to death. Here, watch this. That is unacceptable for your main baddie in a horror game to do this. The first chapter levels, sure, but the entire game is fucking dumb. Don't think this means I never died in this game. I died lots, and 40% of the time, I felt like I was cheated. The engine, HPL engine, that this game runs is a bit broken when it comes to sneak mechanics. When Machine Games made Amnesia, they actually made a new engine called HPL2. In Penumbra, using HPL1, there were many times that I was in shadows or even behind objects in shadows and it simply didn't recognize that I was sufficiently hidden in that area. The result, of course, me being eaten alive by non-scary dogs. Yeah, and I can hear you now, but Larson, if you knew the monsters were mortal, then why didn't you just kill them? The answer to which is, I only found out I could kill them because I couldn't figure out what Penumbra considered a good hiding place. So I eventually decided, fuck it, I'll just start hitting shit with a pickaxe. And let me tell you, surviving a horror game is way easier with no living monsters around. Giving the wolves a break, there is one other bad guy besides the wolves. They are... large spiders, the size of rats. You can kill them, but they are typically too many in number, and they gain up in claustrophobic segments. They at the very least have a more interesting design in my opinion, as the best way to ward them off is to shine a flashlight on them, so you have to constantly keep your light source aimed in that direction. That being said, I am less scared of the giant spiders than the wolves and, well, I'm an arachnophobe, so. Yes, the wolves were my first red flag, but my final red flag was how illuminated the game was. This may seem odd to you, as it's fairly dark compared to other games as you can see, but for a horror game, it seems it is not as dark as it wanted it to be. Let me explain. In Penumbra, you are given a flashlight as your main source of light, with the possibility of finding batteries to power it. You are also given road flares and glow sticks to illuminate areas. These of course are consumable items. 
The thing is, I never used any of my glow sticks or flares because I hardly used my flashlight. Nearly every dark area was easily illuminated without the aid of any of the player's lights. So why use them? The prolific use of light takes away a lot of the possible suspense a horror game can have. I think the possible suspense of Penumbra Overture is my encompassing critique. The monsters are normal, the environments are lit, so what suspense is there to be had? I'm talking about going down a dark hallway, I can barely see the corner coming up, I eek ever so close, my heart racing, as I don't know what to expect around the corner. I'm talking about running away from a monster that I haven't been able to completely see, because if I look around, I know it'll catch me. That is what this game is lacking. The writing is solid, and so is the premise, but the execution does way too many things wrong in my opinion. So this is the end of the video where I typically tell you the type of people that would find this game worth it. But now that I put all that negative shit out there, let me say this. This was Frictional Games first game. It was released in 2007. We are in a time where indie games are hitting their stride and oversaturating the industry. And frankly, when it comes to horror genre, indies dominate with the exception of a few AAA games. But in 2007, you can forget about many of the tactics developers know today about horror games. To give context, Slender the Eight Pages was released in 2012, five years after Penumbra Overture was released on Steam. And Steam was released in 2003, so Penumbra was released four years after Steam began. People that should buy this game, in my opinion, are few and far between, but the ones that should are ones like me. I played and purchased this game not because I was looking for a good first-person survival horror title. I bought this game because I'm interested in looking at the steps it took to make Amnesia. And I got that. Penumbra Overture may be a mess, but when you play it, even for a little bit, it is clear how this game became Amnesia. So if you're looking for a well-written survival horror game that gives perspective to Frictional Games creative potential and growth, then Penumbra is the game for you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're interested in other indie games like this, you may want to subscribe to the channel. I try to put up a review bi-weekly. What's more, this channel is fairly new, so I could really use any support you can give. Alright, thanks again. Later.